Now, the arithmetic mean of 11 numbers is 78. Now, we're going to subtract 1 from the first number, 2 from the second, 3 from the third, and so on down the line until we subtract 11 from the last number. And we want to find the arithmetic mean of the 11 numbers at the end. Arithmetic mean, that's just a fancy way to say average. And you find the average of a bunch of numbers by adding them up, dividing by how many numbers you've got. We've got 11 numbers. So our original batch of numbers here must have had 11 times 78 as the total sum. So divide by 11, you get it average of 78. So in order to find the average of these resulting numbers, first we want to find the sum of all the resulting numbers. So our sum, well we have our original sum which is just 11 times 78 and then we're going to subtract 1, 2, and then 3, and then 4. So we're going to be subtracting the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 9, 10, and 11. Now, I've got a bunch of numbers in a row here, nice consecutive numbers there, evenly spaced, and that's really nice, because then when I add them up, all I have to do is think about the middle number. The middle number here is 6. And here's why I like to think about the middle number, middle number 6. Now, let's look at the ends. 1 and 11, you add 1 and 11, that's like adding 2 6s, 2 and 10, that's 2 6s, 3 and 9, 2 more 6s, 4 and 8, 2 more 6s, 5 and 7, 2 more 6s, and there's a 6 in the middle. Put them all together, you got 11 6s. So when you add a bunch of consecutive numbers here, it's just like adding the middle number over and over and over again. So these 11 numbers in a row, you add them all up, it's like adding 11 copies of the middle number. Let's factor out the 11, and our sum is 11 times 72. There are 11 numbers, so our average, you divide by 11, our average will just be 72. So check that out when we're subtracting the numbers from 1 through 11. That's just like subtracting 6 every single time. Well, now if you subtract 6 from each of a group of numbers that average 78, sure enough, you expect to get an average of 72. All right, on to the next problem. We'll see again how this thinking about the middle number is so awesome. Once again, we have some consecutive numbers here, but this time they're even. So it's not one, two, three, it's like two, four, six, eight. But they're still nice and evenly spaced. So we're going to think about the middle number. Now we don't know what the numbers are initially, so we're going to use a variable, but we need to make sure, well, it's even. So we can't just use n, we'll use 2n. That makes sure it's even. Now I'm going to write this all out so you can see why we start from the middle. Start from the middle, there are five numbers. We go up by two even numbers, which means we add two each time. We go down by two even numbers, and there are, there are five numbers. Now, we have to add them all up because we want the sum, and now we see why we think about the middle number. Minus two, plus two, cancel each other out. Minus four, plus four, cancel each other out, and we're left with five copies of 2n. Once again, you take the middle number, you multiply by how many numbers you have. 5 copies of 2n gives us 10n. We need this to be a perfect square. We know that n is a positive integer. The smallest positive multiple of 10 that's a perfect square is 100. That tells us that n is 10. And we want the least of these 5 integers. 2 times 10 is 20 minus 4. That gives us 16. And once again, thinking about the middle number solves the problem. Let's try a harder problem. We want to represent 15,015 as the sum of two or more consecutive positive integers. That looks hard. Now, we could just do trial and error, but we might be here for a long time because that's a big number. So let's try this. Then we've only got consecutive integers again. So we can do the same thing where we think about the middle number. We multiply by how many there are, but well, our previous two examples had an odd number of numbers, so it's clear you had a middle number, but well, what if our numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? We have an even number of numbers. Say that's our list and we want to add these up. What's the middle number? Well, the middle number is, well, midway between these two. We'll just call our middle number 7 halves. You know, just we get the middle number by taking the 2 on the end, adding them up, divide by 2, just take the average of the 1's on the end, or average of the 2 in the middle, it'll be the same. Middle number is 7 halves. When you add the 1 and the 6, well, that's like adding 2 of these 7 halves. You add the 2 and the 5's, adding 2 of these 7 halves. Add the 3 and the 4, adding 2 7 halves. So when you add up this whole list, you have the number of numbers times the middle number. So our middle number trick works just fine when we have an even number of numbers. So let's try 
our middle number trick here. All right, cut that off. We're going to say M for middle. And N is going to be the number of numbers. And we know that when we add up our string of N consecutive numbers, M is in the middle, the sum is going to be N times M, and we need it to equal 15,015. We have one little wrinkle here. M can be a fraction. It can be something divided by 2, because we're going to get M by taking the two integers on the end, adding them up, divide by 2. It could be some odd number divided by 2, and I don't like fractions. So we're going to get rid of the fraction. We're going to say M is K over 2. And this is nice, because K is an integer, because K is just a sum of the two numbers on the end. And, well, it's a lot easier to say K and N than to say M and N, because M and N together are confusing. Now we have N times K over 2. K is an integer. That's really nice. Is 15,015. Now we'll rearrange that a little bit. N times K is 30,000 and 30. But N and K are integers. So now we only have so many options for N and K. You know, N can't be something that doesn't divide evenly into whatever this gigantic number is. Yikes. But N and K have to be factors of 30,000 and 30, and they have to pair together. They have to multiply to 30,000 and 30. So we're thinking about the factors of 30,000 and 30 now, so we should find its prime factorization. So I'm going to split this up into, well, this is just, I'll write this up here. So 30 times 1,001. That'll make my life a little bit easier because we know that 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. And 1,001, well, that's 7 times 11 times 13. And if you know that right off the top of your head, you've been playing with numbers way too long, kind of like I have. All right, so now we've got our prime factorization of 30,030. So now well, it looks like we can just take some of these primes, put them in N, put the rest of them at K, and we get an N, and we get a K, and all's good. Does that seem right to you? Oh, let's try it out. You know, I don't quite trust it yet, but I'm going to write this prime factorization again over here. We've got N times K is 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 11 times 13, and we know that that's 30,030. Let's try a couple examples real quick, get comfortable with this. We'll try n equals 2, and that'll make k 15,015. And we remember our middle number is k divided by 2. So our middle number here is going to be this divided by 2 is going to be 7507.5. So that means the two numbers will be, well, that's the middle number, 7507.5. Our two numbers are 7507 and 7508. Sure enough, you add those two together, bingo, we have a winner. That works. All right, let's try another one. N equals 3. So now K is 10,010. Middle number, divide that by 2, 5,005. There's our middle number. So we go up 1. We go down 1. Life is good. Add those three together, we get 15,015. We have another winner. Is this always going to work? Well, rather than check each one individually, I just get a feel for it. I want to think about the extremes. So one extreme is we put all the primes, we put all this mess over there in K. So K is 30,030, N is 1. Read the question. Two or more positive integers. N can't be 1. N has to be at least 2. So let's remember that N can't be 1. I'm going to write this right over here so I don't forget. N can't be 1. So we can't do that. Let's try the other extreme. Let's put all these primes over here in, K, in N. So N is 30,030 and K is 1. Well, if K is 1, the middle number is a half. So when I start making my numbers, I go down from a half, I go 0, negative 1, negative 2. That's a problem. That's a problem because we need positive integers. None of these integers can be negative, so I can't I can't do that. I can't have k be 1. And, you know, if, it's, if k is 2 and n is 15,015, our middle number is going to be 1. We're going to start from 1. We're going to go down. We're still going to have a problem. 
Hmm, we have a limit on how small k, k can be. So let's think about how small k can be. What's the smallest we can ever get for the middle number? The smallest that's allowed is when we start from 1. And our n numbers look like this, 1, 2, 3, and so on, up to n. This is our worst case scenario. We can't let this, can't go any lower than this. So the smallest the middle number can be is n plus 1 over 2. That's what happens when we get 1 through n. Now, when we move these numbers up, move this whole group up, middle number gets higher, we're good. We can't move them any lower. We can't go any lower than this. So the smallest our middle number can be is n plus 1 over 2. It can't be n over 2. It can't be anything less than that. So what this tells us is that k has to be greater than n. If k is greater than n, then we're okay. That means we've shifted this higher. But if k is n or smaller, that's no good. Some of these are going to be 0 or they're going to be negative. That's no good. So as long as k is greater than n, we're fine. If k is less than n, we're no good. So now let's go back to this and think, how many ways can we split these primes up across n and k? Well, we have two choices for each of these prime factors. We can put the 2 in either n or k. We can put the 3 in either n or k. And so on. We have two choices for each of the prime factors. That gives us 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the 6th is 64 ways to divide up these primes. Put some of them in n, some of them in k. But of course, some of these are going to end up having n greater than k. And that's bad, because k has to be greater than n. And others are going to have k is greater than n. Now, if you look at every single way we can split these primes up, they're going to come up in nice little pairs. You know, you can put the 2 in n and everything else in k, or you can put the 2 in k and everything else in n. So for every single way we can split up these primes that has k smaller than n, that's bad. There's going to be another one with k greater than n, and that's good. So half of these ways we can split up these primes are going to be k greater than n good, and half are going to be k less than n bad. So we only want the half that are good. And we don't ever have to worry about k equaling n because that's not a perfect square. So in every single one of these lists, in every single one of these, you can take them all, pair them off, half for good, half for bad. So we found that there are 64 ways to split these up. Half of them are good. That leaves us 32. 32 of these have k greater than n. We have to remember this right here. n can't be 1. We have to take that one out. So we have 32 good pairs. We take out this one where n is 1, and we're left with 31. And we've knocked off a really hard problem just by thinking about the number in the middle.